Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans and Vool, and in this video we're creating a mechanical joint. So we're going to try and work through this as efficiently as possible, though I will talk through what I'm doing along the way. With how I'm going to go through this, I'm guessing this is creeping into a more intermediate level video, and we are going to use some add-ons to speed things up. The main one that I'm going to be using is machine tools. Now you could do all of this without machine tools, but it just makes life a lot faster. Specifically, I'm going to be using the align tool quite heavily, and that's going to speed things up or at least allow us to do things without relying on the 3D cursor. And actually this makes things a lot faster in my experience if you're not going to do repeated actions in one place. The other thing that we're going to use occasionally is the focus tool that you don't need to use that you could just use forward slash but importantly we're going to use the cursor and origin manipulation quite repeatedly again to just speed up the process of moving around the origin of objects. You don't need to use any of these if you don't want to it just speeds up the process. I'm also going to use mesh machine at one point which is made by the creator of machine tools. It's a more expensive add-on but it is useful just for creating some nice shapes at points. So let's shift a mesh and then create a cylinder because this is for 3D printing I'm going to want this quite nicely rounded so I'm going to up the vertices to 128. You don't need to do that if you're just doing this for rendering and importantly I'm just going to scale this up to a random size so that they don't have a perfect size that we're creating this at which is often the way in projects. Then I'm just going to S and then Z to make that a bit longer and I'm going to shift and D and Z to bring in a copy of this and the idea is these are the two points that we're trying to connect together with this join. Now I'm going to select both of these objects and control and A and apply the scale. We want to make sure that this is not going to cause a problem with certain things like booleans or bevels and stuff like that. So we need to create this join and we're going to use another cylinder for that. So let's shift A, mesh and bring in a cylinder and we want this to be wider than either of them. So that's G and Z that up to somewhere and then we're going to want to rotate this. So that's R and X and then 90 and we want this to be connected in a solid way as if it was welded to this component. So let's just select that and then G and Z this up to the point where it's close but it's not going too far. If we go here you're going to end up with this horrible shape so let's not do that. Now what we're going to want to have then is this rotating around this object and there's loads of ways of doing this. We could be involving the cursor and things like that. What I'm going to do instead is press F to isolate this. You could use forward slash, go into face mode, select that, shift and S. This is where our origin manipulation comes in and put our object origin to the face. Go back into object mode and F to come out of that and then you can see we want this and that origin at the same origin as this. So click, shift click. Alt and A and that uses the machine tools align function. At the moment it's aligning everything, the location and the rotation. Well we don't want the rotation, just the location and now that is perfectly centered. Which means if we want to R and Y, this is the movement that we're looking for. So there we go, good start. Now this is the bit where we're going to have a few options and whether you want this to be probably mechanically correct or not. I'm going to be honest, I'm no mechanic. This could be absolute rubbish in terms of the mechanics, but it looks cool. So let's click here, Shift and D to duplicate it, and then we'll S and ZZ and bring that out a little bit further, and then S and Shift ZZ to just bring this down to be much smaller. So this is probably the more mechanically accurate way of doing this. You'd have a bolt that goes through this and then through this. So in this instance, we're going to need these vertices to be higher. So let's go into vertex mode, A, G, and Z that up to somewhere, let's say, there. We'll forward slash this to have a look at it. And then in face mode, I'm going to select that face and just add in like a chamfer or something. And then we've got our origin in the correct place. And then this will rotate around that bolt that in x-ray mode we could see would go through both these objects. So that's one way of doing this. And it's probably the more mechanically sound, but it just looks a little bit dull. So let's shift and D and then Y and bring that off to the side. We'll come back to that later. What I want to do instead, let's delete that out, is have this have a nice really T shape. Now at the moment I've got a problem. I duplicated it and that means I now can't undo this. So that's very, very annoying. 
But we can fix this very easily with these tools. This isn't really part of the process. This is just showing what the tools can do. Let's go into face mode. We'll select those. I'm gonna start with mesh machine and unchamp for that. So mesh machine is great. One of its core things that it can do is effectively allow you to fiddle around with bevels and chamfers as if they were non-destructive, which is such a cool thing to be able to do. Then with that face selected, we'll shift an S and move our object origin back to that face. And then outside of this, click and Alt and A, and it's back where it is. So as I said, we don't need to be manipulating the cursor to be doing all of these things with machine tools. So that's really handy. And then obviously Mesh Machine allows you to do funky things with those bevels as well as other things as well. I've got a link in the description for both these add-ons if you want to check out more things they can do. So let's create our T-pipe. Again, this is mechanically probably very, very wrong. So Shift and D, we'll bring that over to the side. We're gonna Shift and S, bring our object origin to the geometry and then click here and then Alt and A and then we're gonna allow it to do the rotation this time so that now it's rotated perfectly. Let's just F to isolate these with our focus tool and we can see that these are aligned perfectly so we get this great exact cut through when we Boolean these together. So that's all that we really want. Now the reason for this is that if this was, let's say a little bit higher, this then looks very ugly. If it was a little bit lower, then this now also looks quite ugly. So that's why we want this in that format. Let's just S, Z and Z to bring that in to, let's say there, that looks fun. And then we'll join these two together. So go back into focus mode, click, shift, click, control and plus, and then we'll H to hide that. And we've got our Boolean sorted that was using ball tools, which is native to Blender. And this is going to be perfectly aligned. So we've got no issue with where these connect together. Now, if you're doing this for something and you care about engons, yes, this is gonna create an engon. Let's just apply this, so we wouldn't have to apply this. We can leave it unapplied. But if we go into face mode, this face here has got an engon. In fact, let's go into vertex mode. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five vertices here. Oh dear, what a catastrophe. If we want to fix that, we could just K to get the knife tool up. Let's go to that vert there, click Z, C, click space. And then we've got rid of all of those. Oh, actually we haven't done that quite straight. Let's just do that again there, Z, C, click space. There we go. And we've got rid of all of that. We might need to, let's just three for cleanup. There we go. And we've got this working much better. Let's click that G and then we've got that sorted. So, so let's just check, yep. So we've got no misaligned vertices there. So that's working perfectly. And that cleanup tool is also part of machine tools. So if you do feel the need to apply those, then that is the way to do it. Right, so at the moment this looks great. We need to cut out our area here. Now, this is just something to consider. At this point, we can't have this R and then Y and then 90 minus coming to here because it's going to interfere with our object that we've got because these are the same size. If you don't want this to happen, you'll have to S and then let's shift Z, do something like that to make it much smaller so that can work. Or you could do the opposite and have had this much smaller. So S and then scale that in and then that would work. So you can do this if you want to. In fact, maybe let's do that so that we can have it go to, let's say here. So we'll stick with that, but you wouldn't have to do that if you don't want to. You could just have that so it doesn't quite go to 90 degrees. In fact, I think that's gonna look more fun. So we're just gonna go back all the way to there and keep everything the same size. But that's an option if that is something that concerns you and you need a 90 degree turn. So let's cut this out. So we want this cut to go relatively high. What we'll do is shift A, mesh, and bring in a cube. We'll scale this up so it's a little bit wider than this. G and Z that up so it's as high as we want it to be. Let's just S and then scale this in everything other than the Y axis, so Shift and Y, somewhere there. Let's just bring that down again. We said somewhere about there, I think. Click, Shift click, Control and minus, and then we've got that cut out. But this looks pretty ugly, so what we're gonna have to do is Control and A and apply the scale, go into edge mode, click that edge and that edge, Control and B, Click C so they clamp, scroll up until we get however many segments we want. Let's go with, I don't know, 33, something like that. And that looks fine. So, 
H to hide that, and then we've got this, and we can see that really cool cut. Now, if we wanted to, we could S and scale this down, but all we're doing is reducing the space, and we're going to have to move things around. So we need to keep this a little bit wider, and otherwise it probably wouldn't be structurally sound. In fact, maybe these bits are a little bit too narrow. So let's just S and then Z, Z to make that a little bit wider. And then we can go into face mode and click those. And then S and then Y, and then we'll get those a little bit wider as well. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. So now this looks like it works. Let's R and Y, and then, yep, we could rotate that around. Now, this is why this is mechanically probably not accurate, because with this T junction, this is really as far as you could get with this join. Now, it depends on how much you care about mechanical realism in this. I would just still put it to somewhere like there and not really care if this is for 3D printing because no one's really going to notice. But if you do care about that, you're probably going to have to do something like this where you get your bolt going through. So let's fix this one as well so it's done. Um, I'm just going to bring the cutter back. So let's Q and ever scroll. That was using hard ops. Well, you could find the cutter here. I'm going to shift click on that. And then to speed my life up, I'm going to right click, machine tools, align relative, click there, click. And then now we've got a copy of this in exactly the same place relative to our central objects. And click, shift click, control, and minus. And we've got exactly the same thing going on there. So there we go. So that would be how we can do this. So that's our two options, really. We can do anything extra that we want to at this point if we want to change anything around, but that is the basics of it. Now, if we do want this to look really funky, let's click, shift, click, and control, and plus to Boolean those together. Let's H to hide that. And then we're going to apply all. Then I'm going to go into edge mode, click, alt click. That's using mesh machine. And then I'm going to Y, and we're going to do an offset cut. This is one of the other things that mesh machine can do. Let's not do it too thin there. And then I can control and B. Probably don't need that many. So somewhere like there. And then we get this really cool rounding. So that's an option with Mesh Machine as well. Now, just so you know, to do that, if you do purchase Mesh Machine, so let's type in Mesh Machine, you need to come down and you need to activate the experimental features. So that offset cut is an experimental feature and you need to have that enabled. So there we go, we've got our cool funky joint. We can R and Y and rotate this around and we're pretty much good to go. So hopefully that was a nice little look into the things that we can do with some of these add-ons, how quickly we can do them and manipulate these different objects. And if you are interested in any of those add-ons, there are affiliate links in the description. But as I said, we can do a lot of this Without them, they just make things much more efficient. I also have playlists on a range of these really cool add-ons, so do feel free to check them out. I'll put those in the description as well. Have a great day, guys.